Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I have the pleasure, as always, with Manny Pacheco discussing things Hollywood and forgotten. <laughs> Manny, you've forgotten more than we'll ever know. Ooh. Well, one thing I haven't forgotten, it's great to be back in studio as opposed to being out on the road, which we seem to have been on a lot this uh, this last uh, six, seven months or so. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, I was talking to somebody about childhood actors um, these days, and I can't remember the, the childhood act, the child actor that we were talking about, but it came, it came to uh, a discussion that they're really very different. Of course, times mm -hmm. are different than the old, I'll call it classic Hollywood films. I, I think of uh, Jackie Cooper, uh, our, kid, our kid, our, our gang. gang comedies. Yeah, sure. Um, there was a whole host of uh, uh, the dead end kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, they were young when they started. <laughs> they were kids <laughs> and they, they made enough movies that they were pretty well grown up. But I would think of Leo Gorsi and those guys, Hunts all, um, when they were children. And of course, there's Elizabeth Taylor, um, who started as a child. Well, there was uh, also actor, Shirley Temple, Temple Mickey Shirley Rooney, Temple. Judy Garland. But there were, there were lots of actors who were never um, the Shirley Temples and the Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, they weren't the were, big names, know, but they were, they were, pro they were uh, uh, prolific. Yeah, yes. they had great careers. Yeah. Did a lot of stuff, um, but that era, uh, the golden age of Hollywood, did seem to have more child actors, and it did seem to have um, it, more character roles for them. Yes, it. yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. And uh, yes, we don't have to spend time talking about Shirley Temple, who's well known, or, or Mickey Rooney, or, or Judy Garland. But right. even though even the tier below them, Jane Withers, Margaret O'Brien, were big, big stars. I mean, huge. Freddie Bartholomew from Captain's Courageous. Yes. Huge star. You're talking about those kids that grew up during the Depression that were like street urchins. They were very streetwise, very um, yep. savvy. And they played really well on screen. And I, in fact, yeah. I have a chapter. There's a reason why I call my second book Son of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, because I have a chapter about those very streetwise kids. And I think you named a couple of the groups of kids, the our gang comedy kids, where, I mean, led by like folks like Jackie Cooper and Spanky McFarlane and Alfalfa. Um, yeah, Carl Switzer was his name. Darla yes. Hood. These were kids that were very savvy. They knew how to play to a camera and they knew how to play on location, like on a street or in a schoolroom. Yes. And they were just masterful at chewing scenery. I mean, you could not take anything from these kids. They were savvy. They were willing to try anything. And in the end, I, I think Hal Roach had a, just a gold mine with, with the Art Gang comedy kids. Now, the real nice thing about this was that he employed a variety of races, gender wasn't a problem, and he paid all the kids equally. That's oh, did he that, really? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, that was something that just wasn't done, and I think he should be congratulated for his fairness in, in, in pay equity uh, yeah. for those kids. Yeah, but a lot of those now, uh, kids were under contract, right, uh, under studio. So even though we can talk about uh, the wonderful performances, uh, there's a dark side of... Uh, uh, of that and that, well, they, uh, they, whatever they got paid fairly or not, equally or not, not maybe fairly, but equally to, uh, or, uh relatively decently, uh, they were all under contract and, and, uh, they probably didn't make sure. a nickel, uh, going on to the later stages of their life. Well, if their parents had anything to do with sometimes not, mm -hmm. and that is a real dark side. That's another, that's mm -hmm. another subject for another day. Freddie sure. Bartholomew was one that struggled to find his money, ended up having to go back to Hollywood as an adult and work as a director in soap operas. But, well, uh, but the and, reason and why, Jackie Coogan, well, that's Jackie what you say. The reason why, court case. Um, yeah, the reason why um, money was becoming so fair was because Jackie Coogan 
uh, was such a test case for the for the uh, state of California that they came up with the Coogan Act, which provided pay equity and make sure that they they worked only a certain number of hours, the children, right. and uh, that they were um, that they were given uh, chances to also go to school, which was sure. really really important. Sure, that was a landmark case that changed Hollywood. Right, and it was a landmark case. But you know, um, I don't think enough credit is given to Hal Roach because he was the guy who really had all these kids in a stable. And you know, as good as these kids were, as natural as they were, I think it's a the director who could just bring it out of them and create this atmosphere where they could just be kids, or at least seem to be kids, you know, and well, turn it on and turn it off in front of the camera. It's not an easy thing. Hal Roach, Hal Roach would hire directors like Leo McCary, who would go on to make great screwball comedies and himself win an Academy Award. I mean, Leo McCary cut his teeth working with these children. And I, I figure if you can work with a bunch of precocious children, working with Carol Lombard <laughs> or Cary <laughs> Grant's going to be easy. <laughs> I don't know about that. But anyway, they, the, the, the directors certainly deserve credit. Um, the kids were wonderful and they spawned, you know, year, they had, how many years did our gang go? How many years yeah, did and the dead end kids go? D different generations of our gang. I mean, they were, they were all spun in and spun out so that the silent our gang kids were different from the right. uh, talkie our gang. Sure. Now the still, dead, each, each the generation dead, ran for years. The dead end kids were truly a generation of the depression. I mean, these were kids that didn't. Uh, didn't find, uh, didn't work very hard at finding a way to make a quick buck, taking advantage of people, were, seemed to be just smarter than the adults, yeah. uh, had this, a certain lingo in the way they spoke, very slang oriented, looks like they might have been on their way to becoming criminals, if not for, let's say, Pat O'Brien or Ann Sheridan, who would come in at the last minute in a Warner Brothers flick and save them yeah. from a, a certain, you know, career of crime. So, I mean... And and quite frankly, you know, Leo Gorsi, he was the afterthought. He was the last one brought in, and he ended up spending the most time with it and cultivating them into the East Side kids, and then finally the Bowery boys, yeah. well into adulthood. Yes. So and it included other great, you know, Bernard Punsley and and Gabe Dell and Bobby Jordan. These were all part of the dead end kids that we, we, we need to mention because these are names that are never mentioned. You always hear about Hunts Hall or yeah. you always hear about Leo Gorsi, but these are names that should not be Matt, forgotten because have, they really- Do you have a section in one of your, very, your books or on your website that uh, has pictures of a lot of these kids? If not, you should do one. Yeah, my books. Absolutely, in my books I do. Oh, which one? Uh, Son, which, Son of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, I do. Yeah. Oh, great. So if people want to sort of get a, a nice overview uh, of all of them, that would be a good place for them to go take a peek. Right. Let me bring up another family of children. Okay. And and when I say these names, you're not going to know who they are. But when I tell you the movies that were they were in, oh my gosh, you're going to recognize these names so easily. And that's the Watson family. And it consisted of just a number of siblings. I, I want to go through these names. There was Coy Watson Jr. and Vivian Watson and Gloria Watson and Louise Roberts Watson, Harry Watson, Billy Watson, Delmer Watson, Gary Watson, all, all siblings. And That's the most famous, family. yeah, and the most famous of all, the one that you're going to know best from is Bob's Watson, a very close friend of Spencer Tracy. Made to, I mean, they were friends until until uh, Spencer Tracy died. I mean, that's how good of friends they were. And they met on the set of Boys Town. He's the kid that gets run over. He was the friend of of uh, in the film Boys Town, the friend of Mickey Rooney. Oh, sure, mm. yeah. Yeah, and he appeared in some great movies. And he was he, he could cry on command. I mean, this kid was just <laughs> amazing. And I can't tell you the movies that he appeared in. I mean. A Dodge City, he gets killed when he when he he's pulled by a team of horses and dragged across the road, and really wonderful. He also appears in Men of Boys Town, which of course is the sequel to Boys Town. Um, you might remember him in On Borrowed Time. This is that wonderful fantasy where the devil is trying to grab Lionel Barrymore and take him away because he's died, but he doesn't want to leave his grandchild, Bob's Watson. And at the very end, not to not to spoil the movie, but 
Lionel Barrymore dies, but not before Bob Watson, Bob's Watson dies, and they both together go to heaven. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a, and he was also in Young Doctor Kildare. I mean, he was a real stalwart actor in a family of stalwart actors. The Watson family is so prolific. They were now in that. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. There's this wonderful scene where the mayor has to decide who he's going to pick as the next senator. They end up with Jimmy Stewart. All of the kids want Jimmy Stewart, and the mayor, uh, the, the mayor's never, or yeah, the mayor's never heard, or it's the governor. I'm sorry, it's the governor, not the mayor. The governor's never heard of who Jimmy Stewart, the Mr. Smith character is. So the kids all know him because he runs the local uh, boys club. And so they love him. And it's it's a table full of Watsons. <laughs> you know, Manny? And and all right, Manny, I, I have to give you credit, Manny. That is really forgotten Hollywood. Right. That is. And you know what? Anybody who's ever seen the movie knows it's not forgotten. You just don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like so many things we discussed with you, Manny, we wind up saying, who knew? But of course, the answer is <laughs> Manny. That's right. Manny knew because he knows everything about forgotten this, Hollywood. Well, there was this, also this one kid who plays uh, one of the pages in Mr. Smith Goes to Watch, you know, these student pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. And his name was Dick Jones. And he, he looked like a Watson kid. I mean, you know, very, very precocious. <laughs> That's how he got work, obviously. <laughs> you know, the same, you know, the, 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 the missing tooth. And the freckles and the and the and the kind of hair that 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 has a weird cowlick. I mean, they all had the same look if you think about it. <laughs> so Watkins look. I need yeah. kids. Get me a Watkins. Yeah. I need a Watson. I need Bob's Watson. I mean, what a great name, Bob's Watson. <laughs> and uh, it really is a credit to Spencer Tracy. He he took him under his wing, and it was kind of like his kid, even as he grew up. And uh, Bob's Watson was, of course, at uh, Spencer Tracy's funeral. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they remained friends for all of Bob's Watson's life and all of Spencer Tracy's life. And that's, uh, that's a really heartwarming, you know, collaboration right there. I yeah. Think. yeah. Well, this, has been, this family, has been a wonderful uh, a trip back to uh, uh, a lot of people's childhood, uh, the forgotten childhoods of Hollywood. So thank you, Manny, once again for uncovering uh, stuff that we've seen a hundred times and just let it slide by. But there were real people uh, and you knew you knew of them. Thank you for sharing. Well, I love to share and you know, I never kid you. <laughs> for more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, Subscribe to us on YouTube and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.